What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today we are on episode number two of our Hero Guide series, and as you already know, this one is going to be for Russell, it's what a lot of people wanted to hear from, uh, or wanted to see from all the comments that I saw in the Ticks Guide video, so we are going to jump on to the Russell train next, because a lot of people are building him, he does amazing in Sealand, he does amazing in Aspen Dungeon, Really good in PvP, not, not quite good in Vortex, kind of good in Tower. Overall, he's one of the best heroes in the game still. So, we're going to start off, go over his artifacts like always, go over his stone options, and then follow it up with imprinting, gearing, enabling, and guild tech. So, let's jump into it. <laughs> So we are going to jump right into it. We're going to start with the artifacts and without talking too much about it, there's one artifact that trumps every other one of them. And that one is the S tier is the upgraded Augustus magic ball. It is absolutely amazing with him. Uh, the more attack you have, the more defense he has as well. He has high block. He has high attack, which is great for his pings. Overall, this artifact is amazing. Whether you're talking about PVP, uh, it's his best artifact, in my opinion, in Aspen Dungeon. Granted, you don't really need it for things like Sealand Tower, but mainly PvP and Aspen Dungeon. This one truly, uh, it, it reigns supreme. Uh, I don't think I'm going to put anything else up in the S tier, honestly, because it really does stand out uh, above the rest. I know there's probably some other niche setups you can do, which are great and all, but as far as overall usefulness... That one is going to be number one. So in the A tier though, the first one I'm going to put is actually just going to be for PVE. So Russell is one of the best PVE damage dealers in the game, solo damage dealers uh, with a whole support team built around him. That is of course outside the Delacium army. Uh, but if you get an upgraded antlers can on him, his damage is going to skyrocket and go through the roof. It gives so many offensive stats, plus gives you building damage over turns. It is really, really good. Um, as far as PvP goes, I mean, I think we can all say an upgraded crown is pretty much good on anybody. There's not too many heroes you wouldn't want to put an upgraded crown on because it's that well-rounded all around item that just does really really good things for you um it's 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 really gonna probably be a tier for just about everybody and with a couple heroes that'll probably be up in the s tier but you don't really need to talk about that much it's really good it's really amazing simple as that one thing i am actually gonna throw up in the a tier is both the upgraded and regular demon bells so this is a very niche setup, but can be very, very strong when we're talking about PvP and in situations like Tower of Oblivion, wanting to go first round, get in the air, get your active ready to go for round two. Uh, in PvP, if you can somehow manage to get your Russell to be faster than a lot of the enemy energy carries, then you can definitely destroy the other team. You've seen plenty of those videos on our accounts here on the channel. Uh, adding in Rogans to help beat her in speed, making sure you have light celestial tower speed upgraded to the max. Those things are going to help you beat out the energy carries. If you run energy Russell and you are slower than energy carries, expect your Russell to pretty much die around one. So like I said, it's a very niche setup, but it is very, very, very strong. After that, we kind of have a huge drop off on Russell. So... He doesn't really synergize with a lot of these artifacts. One I will throw up there is going to be an upgraded Magic Stone Sword just because it does have some usefulness with lowering damage incoming. But after that, I really don't like that many other artifacts on Russell. Again, this is my opinion, but overall, not a huge fan. I would probably not even put anything else in the B tier. I would probably start putting, uh, I mean, maybe crown. We'll put crown up to B tier as well. It's a decent artifact. Uh, I would put a fearless armor probably in the C tier just because. Um, and, and, and just because at the same, I would probably put things like 
the Rui Scepters, the regular Augustus Magic Ball, regular Rui Scepter, uh, just because their speed, and speed works very well on Russell and PvP, but they don't really gain that much from those artifacts at all. Uh, and again, really, if you're going for a super budget build, Echo of Death is kind of, it is what it is. Um, as far as Punisher Staff, Kiss a Ghost, regular Antlers, Kane, I don't really see them being used much, so it doesn't necessarily mean they're bad. It's just we haven't really had many people testing. Um, I mean, I guess we could probably throw something along the lines of this just to kind of round out this tree. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the store down there, but it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of how it works out. He doesn't really need offensive artifacts. He needs to be tanky more than anything. And I think that's what a lot of these artifacts at the top do. Even a Fearless. A Fearless, I'd almost be tempted to bump up to B tier. But as far as this, it kind of is what it is. Yes, speed can be good on him. But if it's not an upgraded A and B, it's not really necessary. It really depends on your team composition for PvP when it comes to Russell. Speed is the name of the game with Russell, and you want your Russell to be as fast as possible to give you as many options as possible in PvP to make him highlight and be the best. As far as Aspen Dungeon goes, again, it's a one and done. You have an upgraded A and B for Russell and, and Aspen Dungeon, and that's it. That's really his only artifact. Now, when you're talking about Sea Land. Sealand is a little different. A lot of these offensive artifacts that are down the bottom of the list are going to be at the top of the list. So that is something to consider. If you're talking about something along the lines of PvE like Sealand, you're putting these up here for sure. Definitely, even, even maybe even Kiss a Ghost. There's a lot of options when it comes to Sealand. Tower of Oblivion, I've always had the best experience with energy on my Russells to get that round two burst. And Vortex, he is just not you so... If you do use Vortex, you might want to use something like an, an upgraded Punisher somewhere towards the top of the list. So as far as those go, that is what it is. Next up, we are going to jump over to his stone. So like a lot of heroes that you're going to see that we're talking about damage, the number one stone for almost every hero in the game for offense is going to be holy damage, attack, attack. Gives so much flexibility, adds more damage to his already big holy damage that he has from his extra arrows that ping the enemies. So that is really, really strong. The other one, of course, I'm going to put in the S tier is going to be speed attack. And that is going to be for PvP. So PvE stone, PvP stone, those are going to be the most bang for your buck. Uh, if you're running an A and B uh, in PvE, you could run an attack attack stone, especially maybe in Aspen Dungeon. Is Holy Attack Attack better? Each one has its advantage based on what waves you're going up against. But uh, either way, they're both pretty solid. Um, one stone that I really don't think is that good is the Crit Crit Attack Stone. He already gets so much crit chance from his active 50%. It kind of feels like a waste in a lot of situations. You know, maybe I bump it up to a B. Somewhere in that ballpark, I think would be fine. Um, really, I, I don't like a lot of stones outside of those on Russell, except maybe a speed crit stone instead of a uh, speed attack. Again, that would be purely for PvP, but besides that, I would take the other speed stones and throw them into the B tier. After that, I would take all the other attack stones throw them in the next round i did notice i actually don't have any heroes that have armor break attack attack but that would be down here as well uh, armor break doesn't do much for russell skill damage doesn't do that much for russell either precision of course doesn't do that much for majority players out there majority heroes and of course uh hp hp i would probably throw that in the bottom tier you don't want a tanky russell you want an offensive russell with a glittery plus August, uh, Augustus Magic Ball, Glittery, Radiant, Splendid, something like that. The one stone that I'm kind of going back and forth on is the Attack HP. It has some promise. It's not horrible. <sighs> Maybe throw it in the B tier. Maybe. And that's mainly just due to like P... Like, actually, PvP, it wouldn't even be that good. Really, you need a Speed Stone on Russell in PvP. Simple as that. Speed or Bust... 
PVE, it doesn't really matter. Holy attack attack will be the best one for PVE damage. Um, attack attack can be a good alternative as well if you're going to Gust's Magic Ball and you needed the extra attack to help lower your damage incoming with that upgraded Gust Magic Ball. But overall, that is what I would call pretty much the tier list for stones for Russell. Next up, let's go over his gearing. So, um, as far as PvP goes, I typically run a full Ranger set. Uh, you really want to get the extra speed from the Ranger boots. It's one reason why I run the full set. I know some people will run a 2-2 split gear setup where they'll run something similar to this. Of course, both 6-star gear. Uh, but overall, it, it does feel like the best. As far as stones go, we kind of went over that, the different options for there. Enables, um, don't follow this. This is this is very specific to my setup. Getting in the air round one with your Russell. Normally, I would run a three, two, three, three, two setup. Let me, let me say that again. A three, two, three, three, two setup. Um, pretty much that's what you're always gonna run. Although if you are doing PVE content, such as sea land you're going to want to run a 22322 setup and of course if you're full out pve you're going to want that e5 enable to be balanced strike instead of unbending will uh, i will go over quickly my niche setup that i use for my russells so the whole point of this build right here with a 32232 enable setup is to get Russell in the air round one before any of the enemy carries get a chance to really energy drain you uh, or do much damage. The big thing is not having Purify and instead having the Shared Fate, which means you're going to get, I think it's like, what, 12 times? Even more than that. Increased by 12 times the number of surviving hero lasting one. So that's like 12% plus like another 2.4%. So like almost 15% more damage in round two because this happens at the end of the first round, which means your active is just going to do that much damage. So again, that's a very, very niche setup. As far as PVP goes, uh, I highly recommend getting to the first void enable on all your Russells that you're using, mainly for that uh, extra speed, but you're getting more holy damage as well, which is nice and attack. You can't really go wrong with that. Uh, I've not had that much experience going past Void 1, but I do imagine if you're using, if you're kind of letting your Russell carry you through Aspen Dungeon, going up to V2 is going to be probably very, very helpful. Um, yeah, pretty much what I think. Of course, the skin, there's only one skin, but it is a very good skin. Holy Attack and Speed It's a great skin to get if you can. Definitely hide it because it's ugly as sin. Last thing I want to talk about, a lot of you guys asked me last time about it, and that is guild tech for rangers. Of course, every hero we go over, you're going to complete the whole first tree. But after that, there are some considerations. So if you're using him in Aspen Dungeon, there's a couple that you really want to focus on. Uh, the biggest one is going to be that anti-mage, and the next one is going to be the anti-warrior. Um, Assassin is probably not necessary right now in Aspen Dungeon. There's not too many assassins that give you trouble, but Mage is probably the most important one, followed by Warrior. Priest is definitely a don't care about like a lot of heroes. And honestly, you're not really worried about any of the CC side of this. So I would prioritize Mage and then go into Warrior after that if you're heavily using Russell in your lineup. As far as PvP goes, of course, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna max all these out and then slowly start investing into some uh, some shape shifting and maybe potentially other things like maybe the stun. Honestly, the dazzle one doesn't sound too bad with so many rustles, but the uh, the shape shifting get around Sherlock can be really really important. So let me know what you guys think. Would you change up priorities on any of those artifacts on any of those stones? What experience have you had? Uh, let me know. I haven't had too many experiences with the other offensive artifacts on Russell just because when you have the best setup, you kind of just stick with the best setup and you don't test too much. But I will make a good effort to play around with my Russells, especially since we have a bunch of splendid artifacts. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Make sure you take a second, one second, hit that subscribe button. Be like, hey, Barry, thank you for the guide. Here's a subscribe. Here, here's a subscribe and make sure you go enter in every one of those giveaways. We got account tune-ups, so we got gift card giveaways, and we have CD key giveaways. 
So don't miss out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know if it was helpful. Let me know if you would change anything. And I'll see you guys next time.